you may be seated if you can, or if you so desire. You know, for the past few weeks, um, in discipleship study, we've been looking at building up really Jesus' church. And we looked at what that entails and requirements or things that we needed to do. Last week, our pastor spoke about the teachings of the early church. Um, a few weeks ago, we, she looked at believe in the word of the Lord. And I want to continue on that trend this morning. Believe in the word of the Lord. What does it say? You know, we looked at, I think, in Acts chapter 2 last week, and we saw, I think it's down into verse 41, where how the church grew rapidly. Amen. Because they, they, they listened and they adhered to the teachings of the apostles. Amen. And so I believe this morning, if we want to be successful, then we have to listen to the teaching of this book. We have to believe God. We have to be able to believe the word of the Lord, and then we will we will be established, right? Amen. And believe as prophets, and we will prosper. Amen. And so this morning, I want to remind you of something. I heard this, I think maybe a couple of years ago. What you feed grows, and what you starve dies. Amen. What you feed grows, and what you starve dies dies. So we need to starve our fears and feed our faith. We need to starve our fears and feed our faith. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we declare that we have ears to hear this morning and a heart to receive, Lord. Lord, we thank you that our faith are lifted high as we hear your words, Lord, today. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Amen. And Jesus, we say help. Amen. 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 You know, A.W. Towser says this. A scared world needs a fearless church. A scared world needs a fearless church. And so you think about it. We should have the answers, right? Amen. Because Jesus is in charge of this world, right? Amen. And so if God is in charge of this world, and he has the answers, and we are followers of Christ, then we should have the answer. Amen. So therefore, a scared world needs what? Fearless. A fearless church. Yes. So it's time for the church to stand up. It's time for the church to stand out. It's not time for us to be closed in. It's not time for us to be sitting down. It's not time for us to be fearful. It's not time for us to just indulge in everything that is happening in the world. We as a people have to go back to the basics, back to the word of the Lord. What did God say about this? And I can't tell you, I don't know if I've ever had a conversation with her pastor and she doesn't say, but what does God say? What does the word of the Lord say about this? Because the, the word has the final authority. And so as a people, we need to understand that when we go to God, God has the answer. Remember that God sees the end before the beginning. Amen. And so we have no idea what's about to take place tomorrow. Amen. We can plan our day. We can say we're going to get up. We're going to go to work. We're going to pay this bill. We're going to do and we so and so. But the truth of the matter is, I don't think any of us have ever planned a day and it goes exactly as we planned it. But you know what's beautiful about God? You know what it is? It doesn't take him by surprise. It may take us by surprise, but it doesn't take God by surprise. So it's time for us as a church to stand up and speak up and declare that God is able to do far and exceedingly abundantly, more than above all that we can think or even imagine. And this is done according to his power that works through us. So I want to remind the church, this is something that has been bothering me a bit for a bit. I feel like a lot of church members, members of Jesus' church, have been bumped. It's like we're not believing God anymore. We don't trust God anymore. We don't, we don't think, we don't put God as our main priority anymore. We just want to do things our way and then we expect that same result. 
world. We just want to have the answers. We go to everybody else. We go to everything else before we go to God. But I want to remind you of this statement, and this, is, this has been one of my life statements since I heard it a few years ago. The atmosphere of expectancy is a breeding, breeding ground for a miracle. And so if you're not expecting anything from God, you cannot get anything from God. You absolutely will not receive anything from God if you're not expecting anything from God. And you will not expect anything from God if you're not abiding in the word of God. If you do not know what the word says, then guess what? You can't apply the word to your life. Because you have no idea what it says. So I want to propose to you today that God is a God that still works miracles. I want to remind you today that God is a God that still speaks. I want to remind you that God still speaks through his word. He's the same God that delivered Egypt out, Israel out of Egypt. He's the same God that, that took them through, through, uh, through, through the wilderness for 40 years. He's the same God that, that provided for them day and night. He's the same God that kept Daniel when he went into the lions, then he hasn't changed. Amen. And so if we're abiding in his word, when we're met with a crisis, then we recognize that we can go back to the word. We, can, we know that we can trust in his word. We know that we can have that confidence in him because this is what he says. You know, the scripture says that in one day, one day, in one day, one day, 3,000 um, people was added to the church. What would that look like in today's day? What made that happen? What was the causal, effect, um, causal reason for that? How did that come forth? I want to remind you that this is the same God who allowed that to happen. It's the same God that we're serving today. A lot of things have changed, technology has changed, people have changed, cities have changed, roads have changed, countries, even some countries, their name has changed. But God has not changed. He's the same God that when, when he threw the three Hebrew boys in the fire, he protected them. I remember the Bible says when Nebuchadnezzar went there and he looked into the fire and he's counting and I'm thinking, he's saying, but wait, guys, didn't I send three? And he's counting, one, two, three, four. Are you sure it was three or four? And he's counting and he's counting. But it's that same God that protected them in that fire. And you know how hot that was? You think about what the Bible says. The Bible says that when they opened the furnace, the guards that were there died instantly. And yet these three Hebrew boys, they stood or they sat in that fire and they were not burned. Yeah. Now what made them stand firm in their belief? What made them different than us today? How did they develop that faith, that confidence in God? How did they know that, you know what? I am not going to bow to you. I am not going to bend to you. If I die, I die, but I know my God will protect me. How many of us today can stand in that place and say, I know for sure that my God will take me through? Amen. I don't know if we can. He declared through the prophet Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord, I change not. He doesn't change, he never changes. In, 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 in James, he says this, there is no variables, no shadow of turning in him. In Hebrews, Jesus declared that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Why? He is the God of the eternal present tense. There's no past with him. There is no tomorrow. There is a present continuous tense. He never changes. What he said over 2,000 years ago still stands. This Bible is still applicable today. Every word of this is a life changing and transformational if you believe it. All we need is to believe it. All we need is to believe that God has never changed. And so we need to understand that God lives outside of time. And so what affects us now doesn't affect God. 
He told Moses to say to Pharaoh when Pharaoh asked him, who sent you? He said, I am the I am that I am. He never changes. He's still that person today. He's still that I am the I am. And so when we're faced with challenges, we go back to the word and we say, what does the word say about this? Amen. I want to remind you today that the news doesn't have the answer. I want to remind you today that the government doesn't have the answer. I want to remind you today that their job doesn't have the un answer. The only thing that has the answer is the word of the Lord. Amen. Believe the word of the Lord. That's what he says in 2 in, in Chronicles, in way, way down in verse 20, it says, Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. When you believe in God, you will be established. Whatever he says to you, you will be established. And so you can stand on that word. What has God said to you? You see, when we feed on the news, and we feed on gossip, and we feed on everything around us, then we're building up our unbelief. That's what happens. And those words will fall. And so fear will come in. Distractions will come in, and so we no longer believe God. But when you feed on the word of the Lord, his word fosters faith. Amen. For the Bible says that faith comes by yeah. hearing, and hearing comes by the word of the Lord. The Bible also said the word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And so me, for me, every single day I get up. I wake up and I make a choice to read his word. Amen. If I don't get to it in the morning and I try to do it in the morning, I make sure that I get to it before the end of the day because this is what is sustaining me. Amen. When I feel down and out, when I feel like, God, I don't have the answer, I go back to the word of the Lord and my faith is increased. And so I can declare over my life daily that how I am today, it's not how I will be tomorrow. Because I know that and the Lord says, I should believe in him. I should believe in this book and I will be established. Amen. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all and heart and he will direct your path he will direct your path so you allow this great book to, to dictate your life you allow this great book to dictate your emotions your state of mind and so you will recognize that you are changing you are being transformed you will recognize that nothing is able to move you because you are standing firm Amen. I like to put it this way Greater is in me than he that is in the world. In the world. And that's in this book. And so when I'm overcome with challenges and I don't have the answers, I can surely go back to this book. I can go to God and I can say, God, you are greater than every circumstance I face. You are greater than everything that I face. And the Bible says that he's with you wherever you go. And so when I say greater is in me, I am very, I like to put it this way, he's around me, he's behind me, he's above me, and so therefore I am covered. Therefore nothing can come to me because I am protected. And so the Bible reminds us also again, when situation comes upon you that no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have the authority to condemn it. And so when situation comes and people accuse you and they say all manner of evil against you and people set traps towards you, you can declare that over your life. How? Because the word is in thy mouth. Amen. But when you don't have the word of, the, of God in your mouth, you have nothing to fight with. Amen. You have absolutely nothing to, to fight with. I love that the Bible says his eyes go to and fro the entire world. This is God looking for you, trying to find that one person who will show himself strong and so 
those on his behalf who is loyal to him. And when your eyes are fixed upon him, he will take you through. When your eyes are, when you are looking at Jesus, when your focus is on Jesus, it doesn't matter what storm of life comes your way. Amen. You are fixed on Jesus. You, My Bible, this great book says, he will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Not just when you come to church on a Sunday morning and for that two hours, three hours, you're all in and you're listening to what Pastor Weber is preaching. He's saying and your mind is fixed on Jesus. And when you go through the door, you forget about Jesus and you're gone your ways and you're planning everything else. You can't have peace. Amen. The Bible says he will grant you peace, perfect peace whose mind is stayed continuously, present continuous tense. It has to be an ongoing process for him to work in you. But if you, you're not stayed on him, if you're consumed by everything else, then guess what? You have no peace. Your peace is not perfected. You have just pockets of peace. Maybe when you get up in the morning and you do your three minutes devotion, you have a little peace. But by the time you get to the traffic, peace is gone because your mind is not stayed on him. Your mind is not stayed on him. Amen. When we listen to the lawlessness in the news and we look at the economic crisis and we look at COVID still going on and every other issue that's happening in our world, we can look and say because we have the word in us that God has not given me a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. I have given you enough today to remind you that yes, you will have afflictions because the Bible said so, but the Bible also says that he will deliver you from them all. Amen. So yes, it's for a time. Amen. Yes, it's for a time. Yes, you will have troubles. Yes, you will have crisis, but the Lord says he will deliver you from them all. Amen. My Bible says this, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season when things are not going well. I know that my God is instructing me. I know that my God is telling me what I need to know. Amen. My scripture says, my Bible, I have set the Lord always become before me and because he's at my right hand I shall not be moved and so no matter what circumstance come before me I am not moved you know I was driving with my pastor on Monday and we were going to a, 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 an appointment and I was talking to her about something and she said this to me I'm not moved why because the Lord has given her a word and so when you have that word, one word from God changes everything. One word from God changes everything. And so when you have that one word, it doesn't matter what comes, you know that it is settled because the word of the Lord says, forever, oh God, your word is settled. And so you have peace with that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> then he goes on and he says, my heart is glad. And my fresh flesh also rest in hope. Rest in hope. Because I believe in Jesus. Because I believe this book. Because I'm reading this book daily. And I'm applying this book to my heart. I'm applying it to the circumstances of my life. Amen. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to thread upon the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemies and nothing shall by any means harm you. And so when things come at you and it want to harm you, you remember this with scripture and you remember that Jesus said, I have given you power and you can, you ever seen a snake? When a snake bites are poisonous and yet the Bible says he has given you power over that and so you can trample it and you can crush it out and you know that any, any weapon, any the power that comes against you and the challenge that you are faced the Bible says that he has given you power over that Amen. that's what my Bible says Hallelujah. my Bible also says 
that as for God, his ways is perfect. Amen. His ways Amen. is perfect. Amen. And so when you're a child of God, nothing happens to you by chance. Amen. If you're resting in him, nothing happens by accident. Because his ways are perfect. The word of the Lord says to you, and he's proven to you, that he's a shield to all who trust him. Another one of my favorites from Psalm 20 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord God. We know that he will deliver us. And so some may trust in the money in their bank. Some may trust in their job. Some may trust in the relationships that they're in. But I will trust in my God because I know for sure he will deliver me. Amen. Paul wrote how God highly exalted him and gave him a name that's above every name. And at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess in heaven and on earth and under the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. So then, what shall we say to these things? All these things that surround us, all the new stuff that we're hearing, all the joblessness and the state of the GOP and the fighting in the House of Representatives and everything that is happening, the war in Ukraine and the shortage of this and the high gas prices. What shall we say to this? What shall we say to these things? I'll tell you what we can say. If God be for us, who can be against us? And so no matter what comes your way, know that you are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded and hear me. I want to drag you up out of the pit because as I pray through this message and the more I speak to people, I realize that we as a, as a church, as members of Jesus' church, we're losing our confidence in God. We're losing our hope in him. We're losing, we're losing, we're moving away from God and moving towards the things of the world. We're so content in our circumstance that we no longer pray. We no longer seek his face. So I am persuaded. This is what the Bible says. And I'm saying, reminding you of the scripture this morning. So drag you up and bring you up out of the pit today to bring you over to this persuasion that Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall separate me from the love of Father which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So then, what shall separate you? Paul likewise said when looking at the circumstances of his own life, he knows that he's getting ready to go to Rome, and he knows what's going to happen, and he knows what he's going to face, he knows what he's going to come against, but I love that he says this, none of these things move me, Amen. none of these things move me, I am not moved by what I see, I am not moved by what I hear. I am not moved by anything that is happening in this world. I am moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of God. So you see me now, years ago I went to a conference and the speaker said this and it has never left me. You see me now, I look better in the future than I look right now because I know that God has made a way for me and he's made provision for me and he's taking care of me and I know that I am not moved by what is happening here because I trust in him. Amen. I don't have a cure. I can't stand in here and say I have a cure for all for corona or whatever else is happening. I don't. I don't know the antidote for anything. I don't have all the answers, but I know someone who does. I know someone who does. I know the almighty God. I 
know that his word is inherent. I know that his word is true. I know that his word is irreversible. And I know that his word stands forever. Amen. David says this, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Amen. That means it must come to pass. Amen. It must come to pass. Amen. Jesus reminded us, he says, in this world you shall have tribulation. Amen. What is your tribulation? It's crisis. It's whatever is just bad for you. It's whatever situation you're faced with. But I love that Jesus said to us, but be of good cheer. Because I, Jesus, have overcome the world. And so therefore you will also overcome the world. He said, he reminded us earlier in that passage that in this world you will have trouble. But he said to you when you come to me, I will answer you. Amen. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, the grass withers and the earth fades but the word of the Lord stands forever. So TJM, feed your faith. Feed your faith. Starve your fears. Amen. Feed your faith, starve your, starve your fears. All those scriptures I just quoted, they're all in this great book. Every one of them. And so everything that you need is in it. And so we go back to our text. We looked at the text in Second Chronicles chapter 20, and it says, we know the story. I think most of us are, are familiar with it. We know that King Jehoshaphat and the children of God, they were surrounded by enemies. They were surrounded by enemies. And so I just want to take a little time to break it down for you. Because I, want, I, I know this year God wants to settle some things for us. Amen. Amen. This year God wants to settle some things for us. So we find the people of God in a, in a, in a national crisis. Do you see that happening today? Amen. Right? It's happening today, right? Yeah. Right. And so... We, we see Jehoshaphat going to the Lord. In, in chapter, in verse 12, we see him expressing a deep sense of hopelessness. He knows he can't handle this. Have you been there? Amen. When you recognize, I can't handle this. This is more than me. He knows that he's not in control anymore. He knows that he doesn't have the answer. But he knows someone who does. And so verse 14 says, the spirit of the Lord comes upon one of the prophets who is in the camp and he gives them a prophetic words. And we scroll down and he says, listen all of you Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord of hosts. Now here's what it is. I want you to pay attention to this. When a prophetic word is given in this book, it still applies today. Amen. And so he says, do not be afraid. Church, this word has not come to pass yet. Every circumstance that you face, you can go back to it where he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And that's from 2 Chronicles chapter, um, chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verse 15. And you scroll down to, in the middle of the passage, he says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed. In this passage it says of this great multitude, but I would propose that you personalize it. Do not be afraid of joblessness. Do not be afraid of broken relationship. Do not be afraid of crisis in your family. Do not be afraid of health circumstances. That's what it says, church. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. It's still a relevant word. It's still a word that you can apply to your circumstances. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be a trouble. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then we go back to the scripture. It says, for the battle, it's not yours. It's the Lord's. The battle is not yours. Tell your neighbor for me. Remind them. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You know, I say this. I, I told you earlier that 
the words of this book, they still stand. The prophecies, the promises, the encouragement, everything still stand. And I want you to apply to your life. You know, Paul said to Timothy, wage a good warfare for your prophecies. And so when you look at this, when you stand and you see the Bible says right here, do not be afraid or be dismayed. You can wage a warfare for it. You can say, I will not be afraid. I will not be dismayed. I will not, I will not be moved. We need to understand that they, uh, these words, these words in this book becomes a weapon. Amen. And these are weapons that we can use to fight. These are weapons that we can fight our war with. Why? Because God is on my side and he is the great defender. You know, we used to sing this song. We haven't sung it in a while. We say great defender. And, the, and, the, and there's a line in it that I really like. He says he goes ahead before I know. And he cuts off the head of the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Can you imagine you don't even know what's going to happen next week, next year. But the Lord, because you serve him and because you trust in him, he goes ahead and he cuts off the head of the enemy. And so by, um, by before you even get to that enemy, the Lord has already taken care of it. Let's say amen, amen. Hallelujah. But Jehoshaphat says, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Amen. When you believe God, you will be established. When you believe his prophets, you shall prosper. Amen. When you cannot believe his prophets, you cannot prosper. Amen. And I want to remind you of something. I was looking at that scripture earlier in the week. And when you look at the word established in Hebrew, it means to sit. So believe in the Lord your God and you will be set. Amen. You will stand firm. Amen. You will have a firm foundation. Amen. You will have a firm footing. Amen. And so nothing moves you because you're now standing firm. Because you're now set. Amen. So we can be as a people, as members of Jesus' church, we can be established when we believe in God. Amen. We, can be, we can stand firm when we trust in God. <laughs> he goes on and he says the Lord your God you will be established you will be established I want to say it until you hear it believe in the Lord your God and you will be established Amen. believe in the Lord your God and you will be established believe in the prophets and you will prosper now, this word prosper, when you look at it, it doesn't necessarily mean a lot of money in the bank, your car is paid off, you have a big house, and so on and so forth. No. That includes it also. But another meaning of this, you'll be, you, another meaning of this when you look at it, this prosper, it means that you will break out. Amen. It means that you will break free. It means that no longer will you be corralled in. Have you ever seen like horses in a corral? They can, they can only go so far and no more. They're, they have to be just there. Or, piggy, or pigs in a sty. There's a fence around them. Or chicken in a hen house. They can't get out. They have to stay there. But when you believe the prophet and you prosper, you can break out. You can break free. You can become who Christ has ordained you to be. You can, you can get rid of the negative circumstances. And you realize that I will break through and I will break free because I believe the prophet. Amen. Understand that you are in a blood covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, your Lord. Understand that you're in a blood covenant with Jesus Christ, your Lord. And so I want to remind you something this morning. From Zechariah 9, the scripture that was read earlier, verse, uh, verse 12, it says, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. 
Even today, I declare, I will restore double to you. Return to your stronghold. What is your stronghold? Truthfully, as members of Jesus' church, your stronghold should be Jesus Christ, the rock. And so when you return to the stronghold, you will see things start changing. When you return to the stronghold, you will recognize that you have the answer. You will recognize that you have the hope that society is in need so badly. If you should look at the statistic, they say that oh, this year, between last year and this year, there has been the most suicides committed. Yeah. Especially among young people. Yeah. And I believe suicide, a part of it, it's a sense of hopelessness. Amen. Hopelessness. And so church, you have the answer. You have the answer. We need to step forward and reach the hurting. We need to bring them this hope. We need to be visible. We need to be available. We need to recognize that hope itself is under attack. And so if you have not returned to your stronghold, you won't even have hope for yourself, much less to give to others. Amen. Our culture is aching for hope. Hope. When we think of hope, we think outside of this wall, outside of Jesus' church, hope is just wishful thinking. But in Christ, hope is something different. Amen. It's a joyful expectation of something good or simplified, some a good outcome. And so that's where we differ. When you are in Christ, and he says here, return to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. It doesn't matter what the circumstances seem like. You always have that hope Amen. because you're anchored in him. Amen. You have that hope to know that the end is going to be well. You have an expectation for the things to turn around. What, whatever crisis you face, you know that God's got you. God's got you. You see, if your hope and faith are not founded on the word of God, you're going to struggle. Amen. You are going to struggle. Amen. Your hope, your faith must be founded and grounded in Christ. Amen. You listen to me, I want to share something. You know, you don't really need an umbrella on a sunny day. Unless you're like one of my aunts. I never saw her walking in the sun without an <laughs> umbrella. But you don't really need an umbrella for sunny day. But you need an umbrella when it's raining. Because you want to shield yourself. Rain. from the rain and so on a good day you don't necessarily need hope but when crisis come when that bad day comes when that situation come you're going to need that hope you're going to need to say hope thou in the Lord and so when you already have that hope when you're anchored in, in Jesus Christ and the hope stands firm in you, when that crisis comes, you can surely say, thank God I have hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven, Paul says this, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not in us. So we are hard pressed on every side. This is what Paul is saying. And he's not, in, no, he's not ignoring the circumstances you're in or I'm in. He's addressing them with a solution behind them. He says we are hard pressed on every side. Raise your hand if you ever felt like you've been hard pressed on every side. Yes. Yes. He's not being insensitive to what's happening in your life. He's not being hard and not ignoring it. But he says there is an alternate per perspective of this. So he continues to say, you are hard pressed on every side, yet you are not crushed. Amen. Why are you not crushed? Because you have a hope in God. Amen. We're perplexed, we're scratching our heads, wondering how this is going to work. But guess what? You are not in despair. You're persecuted from every angle. You're persecuted, but you are not forsaken because your God is with you. One translation says, 
that I think is a message Bible says you are knocked down but you are not knocked out hallelujah I am looking to God for the answer Amen. I am looking to God for the answer but if you are not abiding on the vine you don't have the answer and so in Psalm 121 David says this he said I will look to the hills from where is called my help my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Hallelujah. He who keeps you, I'm even taking out Israel. He who keeps you and he who keeps me, he will never slumber and he will never sleep. The Lord God is your keeper. The Lord God is my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not Don't look to your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Don't look to the government. Don't look to your husband or your wife. But look to God himself. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can think or ask or even imagine. So you find yourself in the middle of a crisis. Crisis in the, in the culture. Crisis in the church. Crisis in your family. Crisis everywhere. But we have this confidence. We have this sense of hope. You return to your stronghold. Why? Because God has a reputation of delivering us. We see this time and time again. We see he did it with Moses. We see he did it right through all the scriptures. He's been delivering people. And so he, you, you just need to stand firm. You just need to stand or to the left, but you are not moved. You are standing on this word of the Lord, because he says, fear not, for I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. He says, I am with you to the very end. And so because you know that, you know that he's not going to back down, he's going to preserve you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we looked at, sometimes we looked at the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And when I was little, my mom had this Bible with pictures. And they used to show Daniel just sitting down calmly and little lions like he's petting them. But when you think about it, lions are ferocious creatures. They're predators. And the Bible said that they made those lions hungry. And when lions are hungry, guess what they're going to do? They're going to eat. They're going to eat. That's what they do. But like when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, the Bible says the Lord, the angel of the Lord, shut the mouth of the lion. And I believe that some of us today were in the middle of the lion's den. But I want to let you know today that the Lord is about to shut the mouth of the, of the lion so they will not be able to devour you. God has always, always, intervene in the affairs of man. And he will always continue to, to do so. We only have to believe God. We only have to believe God. We only need to believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We only need to believe God. Jesus. And so we look again at Zechariah 9 verse 11 and 12 and he says, because of your blood covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. I will return to the, you, the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. 
I want to remind you something here. I will set you free. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11 says, And as for you, because of the blood of your covenant, what is that? The blood of Jesus Christ. He says, I will set you free from the waterless pit. Let me remind you of something. If a pit doesn't have water, it is dry. I want to remind you of something else, what Jesus says. Jesus said, when he drove out demonic spirit, he says he's sending you to a dry. Pay attention. You know how Pastor Aldrich reminds us that we read the Bible, word upon word, line upon line, everything is important. And so Jesus said in Luke, I believe it's chapter 11, he said this, that the unclean or demonic spirits go out searching for dry places. Pay attention. And so therefore they go to dry places. Now listen what he says. I will set your prisoner free from the waterless pit. What is God saying here? I'm not saying you're demonic. But I would propose to you that if you're dry, you need water. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit. I want to remind you that if you're dry, you need to be connected to the spring of life. You need to the Holy Spirit so you have water. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, God says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Jesus, I'm sorry, John reminds us in 1 John that fear is a tormentor. And fear is a tormenting spirit set by the devil, a demonic spirit that's looking for a dry place. Amen. Amen. And so Christians who have allowed themselves to become dry, you become an easy target for the enemy. Amen. If you allow yourself to become dry, there's an easy, you're an easy target for the enemy. But if, 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 if we allow ourselves to be constantly watered by the Holy Spirit, Amen. if we're watered by the Holy Spirit, then it doesn't matter what comes our way, we can stand firm in the, in the Lord. Amen. We can stand firm in the Lord. We saw Stephen, he was being stoned to death. And even to his dying day, the Bible says he was full of faith and he was full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, in these days, if we're going to stand firm, then we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of faith. We need to keep drinking from the well. We need to keep drinking from the river of life. We need to keep our spiritual water level up. Because if it's not up, then our lives will be run over by demonic activity. Amen. Our hope will go down. Things such as fear, hopelessness, offenses, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, and the likes yeah. will take control. Yeah. Amen. But I have good news for you. Return, return to the stronghold, these prisoners of hope. And Jesus said this in John chapter 7, if any man, if anybody is thirsty, if you are dry this morning, drink, drink. And then the Bible goes on to say, and out of his innermost belly will flow rivers of living water. I say, if you have rivers of living water inside of you, demons cannot, crisis cannot overtake you. So return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Use the word of God when you're faced with challenges. Remember that the word of God is a fortress, it's a refuge, it's your secret place. You know, Psalm 46 reminds us, and I want to close with this, that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Here's the thing that I know. I don't know everything, but I know this for sure. If I'm in trouble, I know where to find God. I know who to look to. 
God is with me. God is with me even in trouble. And so therefore, the Bible continues to say, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains they shake with its swelling, there is a river, a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the people of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. Amen. She shall not be moved. I want to remind you of something else. You who dwell, not visit, and I said that earlier, in the secret place of the Most High, those who dwell there, not come there on Sunday morning and Tuesday evening and maybe sometime Wednesday if you can. But those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It means you're dwelling in God, in His presence. Amen. And you recognize that He's your refuge and your fortress. Amen. Your God, in Him, you will trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His word shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by, nor the pestilence that walks around in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noontime. A thousand may fall at your Ah, side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come before you. Hallelujah. Church, let's return to our stronghold of hope. I'm going to invite you to stand. Let's return to our stronghold of hope. There's a scripture that says, you were running the race well. Who bumped you? Let's return stronghold of hope. Let's return to this great book. Let's not just have it as an ornament gathering dust on our bedside table or we get up in the mornings and we just say, oh, I don't have the time now. Let's put God first. Let him have first place in your life. Let God's word become the final authority. Let's believe God. Let's believe God and we will be established. Let's believe his prophets and we will, uh, we will prosper. So I want to encourage you to return to your stronghold of faith. Return to your stronghold of hope. Know that God is with you. And if some of you, if you feel like you've been bumped, and you want to recommit yourselves to God, because the truth is, I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is returning soon. And every person in here, has to, every person watching online, has to give an account. And so today, if you do not know Jesus, you can just invite him in your hearts. You can just say, Lord, I repent of my sins. I believe that you are Lord. I accept you as Lord of my life. And he hears you. And for those of us who were running the race well and we got bumped, it's not too late. You can say, Lord, I want to come back to you. I want to return to my stronghold in you. Let's just worship with this song. And if you want to come to the altar, please feel free to do so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did not trust the sweetest phrase, but only trust in Jesus' name. Jesus. Every voice.
return to their stronghold of hope. I pray, God, that you will minister to them. I pray, God, that you will lead them right where they are. We will send them to the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Speak to them and through them this morning. I pray, God, that those who are hopeless, Lord, will recognize, Lord, that in you is hope. And so, Lord, we look to you. Lord, we bless you, Lord, this morning, and we thank you. And we glorify your name, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord. Because you are God, and you are like us. Lord, enlighten our darkness today, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to recognize, Lord Jesus, that you are indeed our God. So this morning, Lord God, I thank you. Thank you for meeting with us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to pray the good Lord here. For your prophecies, Lord God. Help us to pray. I pray, God, that you will answer us today, Jesus. Hear our cry, Lord Jesus. Hear our cry, Lord Jesus. Hear our cry, Lord Jesus, this morning. And answer, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, we bless you for your word today. I pray, God, that each of us who heard this word, Lord, it will not fall on bad soil, Lord, but will truly hear your word and receive it. I thank you, Lord, this morning that we're returning, Lord, to our stronghold of hope. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. For you, over you from Acts chapter 20, verse 32. And now I commend you to God. 